Welcome once again to the Benedictine Monastery of the Holy Cross in Ross Trevor, County Down, Northern Ireland. We pursue our Lenten journey. And of course, as we make our way through Lent, and we have already done this again and again, we think of the Hebrew people making their way through the desert on the journey from servitude to freedom, the journey from servitude to service. Our elder brothers and sisters in the faith, the Jewish people, still have much to teach us. They have much to teach us about what is perhaps a greatly neglected commandment in many Christian circles, the observance of the Sabbath. Every week they faithfully keep the Sabbath. In this way they bear witness to their fidelity to the covenant bond which the Lord made with them and which we believe to have found its fulfillment in Christ. Jesus makes it very clear to us in the gospel that he did not come into this world to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So as Christians, we are not meant to have discarded the Sabbath and the call to live Sabbath observance, but rather to have come to the point where we see that fulfilled in Christ. Might I suggest that a real challenge for many of us today is to understand how to live Sabbath observance and how to live it in a way that shows that we have come to see it as having found fulfillment in Christ. Yes, Sabbath in our Christian lives is vital. And there's a reason I'm saying this. Isaiah puts it this way. Sabbath is to be observed so that we may find happiness in the Lord. I suspect that many of us, most of us, would have to begin by coming out and holding up our hands and declaring that we haven't really thought of the importance of the Sabbath in our lives, certainly in this frame of mind, as what we need to put in place in order to have greater happiness. The Sabbath commandment is not one which many of us keep faithfully, as faithfully as we should. Now, understand me, I am not advocating a legalistic approach to Sabbath rest. I'm not advocating that anyone set up chains on swings or merry-go-rounds in the public parks in the name of Sabbath observance, as some Sabbatarians have done, at least in the past. No, these strict Sabbatarians, as they like to call themselves, have maybe revealed that they haven't come to a Christian understanding of Sabbath at all, because Sabbath, already for our elder brothers and sisters in the faith, the Jewish people, was meant to be a liberating experience. It was a gift given by God for the welfare of his people, and it remains a gift given to us for our welfare, as Isaiah puts it, for our happiness. So Sabbath observance is not meant to be some sort of miserable, joyless experience. Much to the contrary, it is to be received as a gift for the celebration of life, something to be rejoiced in. The Old Testament Sabbath regulation provided a structure within which people would regularly take rest from the pressures of life in order to worship God and to relax with their families and within their community. If they went to the synagogue, this was nearly an option. The real Sabbath celebration was to be lived in the family home with the family, and their time was to be given to God, to the reading and to the study of his word. It's important for us to remember, and I've said this already, we are not to set aside this commandment. It's not just a possible option, something we can do. It is something we are told that we must do in order to be happy. I would want to stress this dimension of things. Ha Sabbath observance has for goal to help us maintain balanced happiness in our lives. When we look at our aggression, our anger, our resentments, when we examine where these things come from, are we not led to recognize that very often they are rooted in our overdrivenness in our overdoing it, even when we are doing all that we are doing in the service of others. Usually with what are sometimes called by way of excuse, the best intentions in the world, 
we can nearly kill ourselves. And when we do that, we end up destroying our relationships. At least we damage them and we impair them. We impair our relationship with ourself and with others. The realization of this fact can be a sobering thought. A wake up call for us and that's no bad thing. Sometimes we need to be sobered up in order to be drawn back from our workaholic tendencies. We can be workaholics. We need to be drawn back from our always overdoing it and drawn back from that temptation which is there in all of our hearts to excuse our overdrivenness by saying, but we're doing it all for the good of others. So much can be done for the care of others that is detrimental to ourselves. And when it is detrimental to ourself, then it ends up by also being detrimental to others, our spouse, our family, our community of life, our friendship relationships. For all these things are vital for our well-being. And all these things depend upon that fundamental relationship for all of our lives, which is our relationship with God, putting God first, putting God at the center, and seeing ourselves in his light, united with him. I put God, relationship with God, and relationship to self on a parity, seeing them as a two-pronged aspect of one relationship, because when we're authentically related to God, we will be authentically related to ourself, and when we are authentically related to ourself, we will be authentically related to God. In this relationship, Sabbath rest has an important place. I suspect we all do find some Sabbath rest, even if we don't take one day off a week. That may be our family holiday. It could be the festival periods that punctuate the year. It could be a day of retreat we take every so often, which we build into our lives as individuals or as communities. And I think when we live these moments, what we experience is that relationships become easier. We feel refreshed renewed. And the side effect is that we are better able to work when the time comes for us to do so again. We find that we are more productive because we have been restored and re-energized by our Sabbath rest. And therefore, given that this is what we are given to experience, we should learn from it. What I'm saying is that we need to be put in, putting into place more than sporadic times of rest, if I can put it that way. We need to be striving to live regular moments of Sabbath rest. Yes, the annual holiday is good and the quarterly day off is not bad. The community retreat or our family day out, all of these are good, but they're not enough. We need a regular pattern of rest in order to continually repose ourselves, not just repose, but repose ourselves. In other words, find our feet in you and constantly get off on a right footing. There are some of us, many of us, who have heavy burdens to bear. We have loads to carry, much to do. And if we're not careful, we can become crushed under the weight of it all. We can do ourselves damage. We can go about like Atlas, weighed down with the weight of the world on our back. saint Exupéry, in his insightful little work, Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince, gives another description for the same reality. He speaks of men like that, and we should include women, of course, in what I'm saying. They are like people carrying heavy burdens, not living human life to the full. He explains their existence to be like that of a mushroom. Just think, try to visualize a mushroom. The mushroom has a poor little stalk that carries so much weight, the head of the mushroom. And so often, we are like that. We are settling for mushroom-like existences rather than truly fulfilled human lives. There's so much weight upon our heads and the little stock has great difficulty carrying it all. The Bible makes an important point in the creation story when it speaks of the Lord God himself taking Sabbath rest. With the commandment to observe the Sabbath, we are invited to enter into the Lord God's own Sabbath rest, and thereby we are invited to enter into his own life. 
An Anglican priest and writer, David Adam, makes a very valid point when he remarks, we need to learn to take time out to make spaces in our diaries and in our days for our God. We need to learn to give ourselves to ourselves and to God so as to be freed enough to give ourselves to others. You see, the Sabbath commandment is not just about rest, it's also about freedom, being free to give. The Israelites are commanded to keep Sabbath to remember two things, to remember and give thanks for and allow themselves to be refreshed within. Thinking of God's work of creation, but also thinking of their liberation from slavery in Egypt. During these Lenten days, may we rediscover, with the help of God's grace, the great gift of Sabbath in our lives. May we be renewed. May fresh life spring up from within us, just as we see it doing when we walk around our gardens and we see during the springtime the buds begin to reappear. Isaiah's promises are for all of us. Strength will be given to our wearied bones, the prophet says. We shall be refreshed like a watered garden. Our ruined lives will be restored. There's always a danger for us to approach Lent like some sort of a strenuous athletic exercise. The danger for us to go at things with greater physical effort and to miss out on the spiritual grace at this time while engaged in what we might think of as spiritual exercises. But maybe the real challenge for us is elsewhere. Maybe the real challenge for us is to allow ourselves to unwind. So often we are a coiled spring. We are wound up and we are uptight. Let's start to see Lent as a time of uncoiling. Let's start to open our clenched fists and cup our hands instead in order to receive the graces God wants to pour into our lives at this time and through us to offer to others. So we have to have outstretched hands during these Lenten days. By way of a practical exercise, let me share with you a suggestion made by that Anglican priest I've already quoted, David Adam. In one of his books, he gives a little pointer about how to live a prayerful, God-focused life. He suggests simply, I quote, throughout the day, take little breaks from activity and affirm the Lord of hosts is with us. He goes on to explain his preference to simplify that even further by saying simply to ourselves, God is here. And spending a little time, we are to enjoy that reality of God's presence. When we do that, then we will find real joy in Sabbath. I remember my late mother asking a Jewish friend what was her greatest joy in life, and she said, Sabbath. And for my mother to remark for me as a child, don't forget what Jesus says, that he's come to fulfill the law. And so the greatest joy in our life must be Christ Jesus. We must find our Sabbath rest in him. So may we make space for Jesus in our lives during these Lenten days, so that we may know love and joy and peace those very fundamental gifts for which we all long. Lord of the Sabbath, Lord of the day of rest, help us to continually repose ourselves before you and in you, and may we find our joy there. Amen. Alleluia. in a media age, of course, uh, an age in which we get almost all of our information either from television or from the internet. Probably less and less of our information is coming through the traditional print media. So in that context, in today's world, uh, an undertaking like Shalom World 
is incredibly important and uh, the efforts to catechize and to evangelize uh, through television and through the internet is incredibly important in the world today. And I'm happy to say that my experience is of Shalom has been entirely positive and I am very happy to encourage everyone who's working as part of Shalom World in their efforts to bring the Catholic faith to the world around us. And also I give my special blessing uh, on all those who are involved in Shalom, all those who are watching Shalom, and all the future viewers of Shalom. So thank you and God bless you. <laughs>